Hello everybody and OG's welcome back Team back. Empire going up against OG game number two for the Miller Major 2016. I'm W1 here with Merlini Dota as we are back after what was a very short break but uh, don't worry I'm sure everyone had Dyer themselves uh, a good bite to eat on their picnic and uh, and now here for game OG's two. Turn to back. We have, believe we have solved all issues so yeah we, we had a um, dodgy Dyer cable dodgy cable. It was tracked down very quickly, PGL took care of it, to and uh, yeah, we're good and going again. Alright. I'm also just double checking all my other stuff. Yeah, let's get some Dota 2 audio into this. Yeah, okay, we're good. Yep, we're good. Wonderful! Game 2 draft. Life Sealer as well as... Uh, <laughs> as well as Phoenix being banned out. The Beastmaster are also out, so say goodbye to the three primary Team Empire heroes. But they do get to pick up a combo. Darkster is still available for them. I, it just seemed like the Magnus was not able to do enough, and like everything just Ten seconds remaining. just crumbled when he was not able to get his blink dagger fast enough, and they Five weren't able to get remaining. that one mid fight where Anti Mage TP'd into his team, tried to help fight with Vanguard, Reserve and didn't end up time. getting any kills. That was very momentum shifting and OG were really happy with that and could kind of punish them very heavily for investing that much. It seems so. like there's still a lot of stuff that OG has to clean up a little bit more. Meltel like, needs to stop dying and he uses ultimates at strange times. Yeah, uh, it, it didn't seem like Notel had the same purpose as the rest of his team throughout the game. Yeah, it, it, um, Crit I think played really well, oh, yeah. Fly also played really well, he farmed his Ags and kept everyone nice and healthy, used Recall when it was up, Moon missed a hookshot here and there but overall was very aggressive, and Miracle, it's hard to fault him in any game I would say, just because he doesn't make that many mistakes. But no tail was the big one for me where it was like, okay they didn't need to pop his ultimate there, he kind of just died on the bottom lane, uh, his itemization was strange too. I didn't like the BOT pickups yeah. because he he already has recall. Yeah. Um, I think with I, the, I, with I, the I, Chen you get BOTs. With with Coddle you don't do not. I, I I can understand why it ended up happening. Like why he made the choice. Like you, you said it during the game anyway. It's just like he TPs to lane, he does he does the push and Coddle drags him back. So Live Sealer as well as the Earth Spirit can focus primarily on ganking and keeping Team Empire under pressure. But uh, it, it felt a little disjointed, a little bit slow as well. Was that was something else you said during the game. Like, like he's not the greatest to counter push against this. Like he could get picked off by by any yeah. major by someone else. If he were a lot more farmed, I think it would have been fine. Like yeah. if he had Shivas, let's say, on top of that, then uh, okay, yeah, he can push out lanes. But anyways, back onto this game. OG have banned out. Nice stalker again. One of Batrider's bigger weaknesses. I don't really think they're trying to go with for a keeper pick this game because the Phoenix has been banned out by them, and I, I would say Night Stalker was much more for the Batrider than for anything else. OGs, turn to ban. This just seems to be like the team's ticking off their boxes. Okay, we have ourselves our offlaners, we got ourselves our roaming supports who are meant to be part of the gank team. Everything else, we just start to tick a box later on. Um, I think. OG still need their pushing core though. They seem to do a lot better when they have at least one hero that can push towers. Generally, that's No Tails hero, so we're eyeing remaining. heroes like DK, eyeing heroes like Death Prophet yet again. Um, occasionally, time. they do the Drow Ranger, which is also pretty decent. Which you love. She's pretty good, man. She's pretty good. Earth Spirit is my, my, okay my luck, with though, I think is, is sli slightly overrated <laughs> as, as far as... You just don't want her to get nerfed, so you'll see her more. No, no, she don't. I don't think she's been buffed enough. I think she's she's got problems. Because she, she buffs everyone else, but not herself. But she's almost like, she's the ultimate water girl. I can't say water boy. Like, like she's a team player. She's mm. there for everyone else to do really well. She the buffs herself up. Remaining. Yeah, she does, but she's also, like, the second you jump off, Five like, remaining. there's a lot of problems that come from that, and you're not going to build yourself a Hurricane Pike, like, Gust can Reserve help you, time. but... Dragonlance is really good with her now. Before it gave attack yeah, speed, now it gives agility, you can outrange towers with it. Yeah, that's actually, like, that's the one that I do like with it when you run, like, the Nature's Prophet, who we actually haven't seen banned or picked so far, um, but Nature's Prophet as well as Drow together, the two of them by themselves, um, when you get like just even like a casual blightstone on one of them, uh, and double dragon lances, you can take towers about 10 Enchantress. 12 minutes in. Like, I'm talking like tier 3 towers. I think dragon lance would be overkill on MP. I think it's fine on it. It, it, it seems it seems like overkill, but it's one of those timing pushes. I actually, I got a funny feeling it was OG who actually did it when I saw mm -hmm. it. Like, I've only seen it twice. 
I think it was done by the same team. Well, Empire yeah. seemed like they want a support that can actually do something in the early game. Uh, Lion and Phoenix just far too level dependent. They did not get their levels, and it was just so slow. If their Lion had level 6 earlier, boom, you get a finger kill in mid. Mac has a couple of minutes of free farm, gets his blink a couple of minutes earlier. But yeah. their supports were just way too farm dependent. Granted, I do not think they expected OG to try lane. I think that was one of the decisions that completely caught Team Empire off guard and forced their supports to be very low on level. Well, here's a support, here's a core which I suppose in a way just become a bit of a pusher. But there's a little bit more of a stronger pusher. Lycan and Enchantress, the minion army starts to be assembled. So, crystal the only hero we have that left is... Oh, wow, really? I, I always get worried when I see a Crystal Maiden up against such strong... Like, strong damage. Like, both Impetus as well as Finger of Death. Even Lycan Wolves can cause her real issues. Gizzer Frostbite versus the Lycan Wolves. And they have a good amount of sustain. Notice last game they had mana and HP sustain. Illuminate plus Chakra. This game, very similar. Healing Ward plus Crystal Maiden. They like to be able to win a team fight and then go to the next team fight without healing. And this yields a lot of towers and actually and lets you end the game a lot earlier. So this seems to be the cornerstone from, you know, from game number one and game number two. Empire, I don't know. I don't know if they have the early game oomph to use the Lycan to his fullest potential. I do not like seeing Lycan when you're forced to play defensively. He's he's okay at ratting, but he's he's not good by any means. And I think that he is much better suited in situations where you can five in early and everyone's pushing towers, not just the Lycan. So you want to have a more aggressive mid then? <gasps> yeah. Aggressive mid. I still like Puck for them. Puck, I think, is just great. And Scandal is great Puck. I'm, I'm kind of okay for the Puck. You know, I... <laughs> It'll also be really nice up against a Batrider, but I still want to see uh, Team Empire. Like, if you're looking for aggressive mids, I want to see her earlier damage, the ability to take Roshan and then push something else. Ten I want to see Scandal's TA. TA is okay. TA gets crushed by Bat and Earth. He Five gets crushed by all these heroes. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's the that... only downside for me. No, no. Oh, the downside <laughs> is he just loses the four it, heroes. <laughs> but it's like, I want something on that kind of level. I don't know if I really get that from, from the puck. Because if they're just forcing into buildings and then go high ground. Wind Ranger is decent, but I also don't like it versus the Bat Rider when they don't have a defensive support. Uh, but Empire banned it themselves. Yeah, Quap I think would be decent for them. Yep, that'll work. That's almost a guaranteed dead crystal mate at the start of every fight. The only problem is you don't really have a, like a good answer to the Bat Rider. And actually, yeah, that's when Puck sounds a lot better. I think Puck rounds it out the best. Any other options that are my lone druid actually would not be that bad. You push Druid to the mid? I don't think it'd be that bad for either team. If you want to push towers, it's nice and up front, doesn't really get owned by Batrider. Mm -hmm. eh, I can I can see it working. You, you are kind of like very biased towards Lone Druid though. You do play a hell of a lot of Lone Druid. Yeah, it's a hero's great. Some people predict they don't have the highest win rate. I think that's a, not really? a bad hero to was, choose. Was that on your prediction list? No, or? mine was Lycan, but Team Empire picked him, so I'm not happy about <laughs> that, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, L Lycan's on my highest win rate because I was backing on uh, Team Liquid. Yeah, uh, Liquid picked him a lot. hell of a lot. I thought the top yeah. of was going like, to just wreck with that hero. I'm like, yep, he's going to win five games and never have to play the hero again. <laughs> like, yes. That's the hope. Yeah. So, OG, that. what are they scared of? A mid, that, uh, it's the reason Puck is also good is because it works well with Lycan. Lycan can chase people down, but he does great if he has other heroes to lock him in place. And I think Puck like just fits the bill for kind of whatever remaining. whatever they want. Are you taking this sweet time? Is there some? No, no, there's nothing wrong. They are Five literally seconds. just. Yeah, I was checking that too. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like are we now just sitting here and having no idea that everyone's out? Like DK. Dire okay. There's their pushing core. Yeah, so they're pushing cores, a little bit of deep push as well, there's a lot of strength, making the rotations to mid might be a little bit more difficult for Empire. The armor is not useful here though, no. which is generally when I think Dragonite should be picked, but if you want a pushing core, Dragonite or Death Prophet are kind of your main two if you want one for the mid lane, but Five seconds remaining. armor versus Enchantress is not that great, Lion versus Lion not that great, versus Darkseer not that great, and... You mentioned earlier the, like, the Lycan being problematic for Crystal Maiden. I think it's compounded by the fact that they have Ion Shell plus Wolves. Mm -hmm. That is difficult to deal with. So Puck is really bad for Dragonite, though. Yeah. Like, it is 
it is just atrocious to deal with. So what other ones? Like, I, I'm, I'm, I hate to say to, to bring this one up from Twitch chat, but I'm watching it just to make sure our stream is okay. Um, but they're screaming for Timbersaw. Timber is great. I was just thinking about it, but I don't think Scandal plays it. This is the main issue. Uh, what other ones are there? Alk has been banned out. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, predict that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shadow Fiend matches up great versus Dragonite. That is one of the dream matches for Shadow Fiend, I would say. Even with the Breath of Fire, this was before Breath of Fire buff, when it minus base damage, before it minus base damage. But now, even if it's minus base damage, it's not that big of a deal because Shadow Fiend has a lot of plus damage. It doesn't affect your green damage, only your white damage. So that is really good for them. He's a melee hero. He has tons, of, he has minus armor as well as a ton of magic damage, which is great for Dragonite. Only problem is Batrider and Juggernaut destroy Shadow Fiend. Yeah. Badly. But at, at the same time, like, you still need to get Juggernaut and Batrider to a point where they can fight. And if the Chantry and the, and the Lion do their job, then SF's going to reach a point where even if Juggernaut and Batrider are stronger Ten against him, remaining. they'll have to commit everything they've got to kill the SF off, which means Lycan and, and the rest of the Five crew do all their work. Remaining. So I'm, I'm kind of okay with this right now. It's super risky, I, I think. You have to worry about the Earth Spirit too, like Earth Spirit against a Shadow Fiend. Oh yeah, that's. Uh, you almost want to see like like a level one smoke maneuver from like the Lion and the Enchantress. Try and predict that movement coming out from uh, from the Earth Spirit. You might just want to, like a Lion just sitting there. But just just behind the T1 Tower, I know he's coming. I have a spike. Let's go. You don't even need to sit behind the T1 Tower. You can just do the the dual lane mid and just you all you do is right click the dk yeah because well, i suppose like unless you get hit by breathe fire you don't really have that much to lose from being there no you don't can you really zone out a bat rider as as uh it's not that easy i guess they probably want a hero though to to deal with the bat rider make sure he's not stacking and free farming so that's what you lose out on is the safe lane if how how should also help out um yep. with the with the shadow fiend but i think this is like <sighs> They they need a mech on that Shadow Fiend. That Shadow Fiend is just gonna get blown up though. Like I, I can see him <laughs> dying in like twenty different ways, just an explosion of souls. <laughs> what are you just like worried about? Like okay, just let's, let's just get him an Aghanim scepter so at least like there's gonna be something more. Oh more yeah, Ags Ags is great on him. <laughs> that heal is surprisingly good. For a moment that I wasn't quite sure if, if you were mocking it or not. <laughs> no, it's surprisingly good. I doubted it, and then I I saw it uh, used a few times, and I got it myself. And I'm I don't think it's an every game sort of thing. Like I think you can kind of build treads mech every game, and it's not bad. But some games I think like eggs is just not not the right choice. Wait, you actually want to get the mech over on Scandal? You want you want to go like uh, I, like Fada build? I just think he's going to be focused down by everything. He's going to be the primary lasso target. He's the primary omni slash target. Like, mm -hmm. Earth Spirit would love to roll in on him and cast his combo and magnetize him. Dragon Knight would love to stun him. Like, he's just seconds. going to be focused. Oh, we'll watch and see what Scanner wants to do with things. Not die. That yeah. is what he that, wants to do. That would be the critical part. I also want to see um, the, the stacking from Empire. Because obviously that was one of the big things for the SF, especially on Radiant side, the fact that you could just slip yourself over and you need to be able to like farm up a quick stack with a couple of raises. Well, let's see if they try and make a move on Miracle. Yeah, Miracle is not going to have a bar of this. Like they're, <laughs> they're already going to get top rune into, into no tells hands, so they don't need to fight this. Begins. Still, XP for Scandal. Wait, did they just ping that ward perfectly? Gold for Scandal? What, did they pick up what? Uh, the ping came exactly on that Observer ward. I thought it came from Fly. Uh, for a moment, but it wasn't. In fact, it's actually coming from Empire. Because uh, the both OG and Empire made mirror wards. Uh, they both moved out very quickly and put down observer wards, which are in the middle of each other's jungles. Mm -hmm. So they see a lot on that front. Well, we got ourselves another quick pause. Hopefully, it's nothing too bad as we've had DCs coming out from OG. But let's have a look at our lane. So we're going to have uh, Ramses.
He'll be uh, playing that Lycan going up against Moon's Batrider. Uh, King Al's going to be rotating with Boots first Lion. Oposhka the secondary support as the Enchantress. No early level 1 smoke. In fact, uh, he's just gone for two sentries. Looks like he's going to prioritize farming in the jungle earlier on. And then might buy the space for his mid, which will be Scandal's SF. Uh, SF will be going up against No Tail, who's on the Dragon Knight. Earth Spirit to be played by Crit early over Venom. So no surprise, early rotations from him trying to find kills. That puts Miracle onto the bottom. Bottom line is the Juggernaut lining up with Fly's Crystal Maiden, which I must note is not wearing Arcana. I am uh, mostly disappointed. Uh, and Afterlife, Darkseer offlane. That's uh, that's our lanes. Interestingly, of the starting items, Enchantress opted for Sentries instead of a Smoke. Often we see Sentries and a Smoke, so you can make sure that you get that free uh, Smoke, but. It's not looking like Moposhka is interested in that, and has opted to buy Clarity with his first 50 gold, as opposed to a smoke. All about the bomb. Juggernaut having to deal with double Iron Shell creeps, and looks like Afterlife will get a relatively early level 2. Is he going to be able to hit that Centaur? Oh, that's some free money. Dang. Free money hits level 2. It's, it's, it's the dream. Not to mention Miracle. Yeah, okay, he's going <laughs> to... Sorry, sorry, that cat healing was one of the stupidest bloody things ever. Uh, Have you, haven't you seen those things in Chinese restaurants? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That thing's awesome. It's, it's the sound effect that comes along with it. It actually sounds like a, like a slightly, it's, it's a cat in distress. That's what it sounds like. He's like, oh man, I gotta heal all these noobs. <laughs> <laughs> the nearest cat medics. Alright, I see a line drawn from, drawn from No-Tail. Looks like he knows exactly where Mposhko is coming from. They are blind on that side of the map, though. However, it is only one Hellbear Smasher. Let's see if we can get another creep. It will be a wolf at this camp. To the south is a Seder. Seder's pretty good, though. I think that's where you eye for the kill. Some good damage. He's actually already got another one available, too. It's sitting next to that tier 1 tower. Yeah, it's out of mana. So, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, that's nothing like that. <laughs> How was just used, though, so this one might be a little bit more difficult of a kill than Empire would have liked, but Scandal... Maposhka's still gonna give it a crack. Oh, he the actually, they actually might get the chicken too if, if No-Tail's not careful. Chicken is on its way out. Oh, that, but, uh, okay, what no. was that maneuver? They, yeah, I thought he was gonna cut through the tree line and use use the Hellbed to tank it. Yep, that's exactly what I thought he was gonna do. But uh, it didn't happen that way. Instead, he came came into an easier area to have vision of, and uh, yeah, he just revealed himself against No-Tail. He could have had the chicken, too, if he approached from the left side. Even behind the tower is okay. Yep. Well, that was... that. that's not good at all. Well, he, that actually means that, like, I, I'm still, like... I know this is going to happen anyway with a DK who's bottle running the mid lane. Like, you're going to use Breathe Fire and keep up with the CS. But it's the fact that the SF is also get, getting CS, boosting up a lot of damage. It's going to hurt later on. As far as the DK goes. Is it worth also getting like a like a blightstone for scandal? Or something to help cut through that that dragon that dragon blood? Nope. That's not even worth it. Not even you need 300. The, almost all the shadow fiends built defensively. Like treads is defensive slash offensive. Mech is pretty defensive because he already has a ton of damage output. He also has howl. He, he's not like in fights. He's not looking to like kill the DK. You kill him with raises. You don't kill him with right clicks. Okay. Uh, his raises just do so much more damage early on in the game. And... Oh, Boulder going up after King Ah. He's only got two sticky napalm charges on him. He turns with the stun that's gonna go on Moon and Rams. He's... Well, he's got Wolves up and uh, Hal, which just came off cooldown. But uh, all that maneuver ends up forcing out is one Boulder from one side, but Moon burns his last bit of uh, easy consumables. In fact, that's actually all the uh, health pots gone from the top lane. But he's level 3. It's just getting past that first a couple of levels. I'm sure most offlaners would gladly sacrifice all their regions to get level 3 safely. <laughs> Moon. Fairly aggressive, man. I guess very aggressive. With the suns, he had two fairy fires, but that's a lot of damage. All he had to do was just walk. He was walking up to farm up a big creep wave that was there. Yeah, that was without how. That. Yeah. That was dubious. <laughs> Questionable. It means it means uh, Team Empire now. Like you take care of the Bat Rider, that's gonna delay. I'm gonna say the progression of the Bat Rider, aka looking for that Blink Dagger timing from Moon. But it also makes it so Ramsey is sitting at 24-5. He's got one kill, include that as the first Blood Gold. He got to his name, and you got SF who is on top of the CS board now. This looks fairly good. 
I like how they're also farming up for Afterlife. They put the Iron Shell over on the, sun, on the Centaur and push it into the wave, because Afterlife doesn't really have a lot of life to, to speak of at the moment. He's relying more on Mopochka, who uh, failed on the denial. Enchantress hasn't really done that much in the early game, though. First five minutes is Enchantress' time to shine, just to wreck all the lanes. But Crystal Maiden kind of secures bottom for OG, and mid lane, that one botched gank, I think, really set back Enchantress. This is another one of these moments. Like, okay, so, okay, Notal is going to get himself in range of the tier 1 tower. Like, he, he burnt that ultimate very, very early on. Actually burnt it before Radiant's crit uh, came right close now. enough to initiate onto Scandal in the mid lane. It's a standard play, though, from Dragonite. It, yeah. it doesn't mean the gank's coming, so I don't really think it tipped off Scandal as to something strange happening. Although that might have. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's help coming in. Maposhka's gonna rotate in through the river. He's only getting himself a wild wing, which will start the tornado now. The T1 tower's under pressure. Double TPs are on the way. Maposhka, no enchant. Beautiful kick on the King R, who is very low. Gets the Hex over on fly. Wants to get the summon to no tail. However, the Raze is doing some work, but he doesn't have enough more, or does he? With uh, extra movement speed, they're gonna catch up with flies. Gonna be the enchant to do it. The raids into no tail. He's got one charge that's available. That regeneration room didn't do enough, and the iron shot burn damage onto no tail, hurting like hell. Another kick from crit, not making it on space. Half life, they're going in very deep here. Team Empire Miracle arrives instantly into the spin. Maposhka can't stop it. Untouchable will not save him. Crit staying in close as well. Now they're gonna try and hit him the old fashioned way. While Batrider might be killing off like and solo on the top lane, Maposhka's got three heroes right behind him. You don't have a spin available, but you got a breathe fire to do the job. And also the Lyca, she died smack bang in the middle of the lane. No idea how we managed to achieve that one. But either way, it's now 2 2 on the board. Is under attack. How the hell did he get a kill on a Lyca? I'm like not that? sure. I liked how Empire <laughs> overcommitted, though, to mid. They brought in so many heroes Dark Seer, Enchantress, <laughs> Lion Seeping in. Scandal? He, he needs all three races to connect for this to work. And he's not going to get it. So they protected the Shadow Fiend and more importantly protected that tower. However, Dragonite Ultimate just came off cooldown. He is way too low to really do that much. But yeah, that kill from Moon, I would say, more than makes up for the first blood. And He's level 6 now. I notice he's also level 6 with Atlas suit. He went for a 303 build. So it's uh, high points up in that up in that Firefly plus Sticky Napalm and Fans. He's, he's pulling down again inside the Firefly. He'll go into Dog Bomb. Wants to turn around to attack on the Moon Ramsey. No! Oh, Moon's gonna get another one! It's actually 2 on 1 for that to work! Maybe he didn't expect the 3 0 3 build. Quite possible. Like that little bit of damage ticks it over. Now they're looking to go in towards mid. Uh, Maposhka showing himself. No tell the dragon form. They're gonna bolt it forward. Uh, Maposhka's already backed up far enough. The guaranteed tower kill here for OG no matter what. A spirit to get the last hit. Look how scared Mamposhka is playing though. With, when Enchantress is playing scared this early, like something is inherently wrong with the early game. And either they like missed out on a few ganks, or people heroes die where they shouldn't have, or maybe a combination of both, which is, seems like is the case this game. And with that, look at OG's vision. That is ridiculous. How deep wards they have, and most of them are fresh too. That was some coordination. Mm -hmm. That that is really difficult to pull off to get that sort of vision after just taking down one T1 tower and within like 30 seconds of taking down the mid T1. And the amount of posturing that Moon is doing on this top lane, I was just trying to get level six. That's all King R was hoping for was get getting level six. Just wait for it home. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really like what he wanted to plan for. The, it's like uh, OG and now, like, they're properly calling the shots around the map. Like, there's no hero which they look to be really scared of. The fact that Moon's able to solo a kill, uh, Ramsey's twice. That's put so much confidence in him. And look at his money, too. 2.1k gold on Moon. I thought, like, giving up first blood towards the Lycan might have been a problem. But he quickly TP'd back up the top lane, found his CS, and... And now, if he can finish up this stack, uh, we'll be having his money for a blink. Maybe he actually should level last two at some point. <laughs> oh, here they are scouting out with the Lycan Wolf with the Ion Shell out in the front. And it looks like Fly will be the first to take that harassment from two wolves. Fly retreating back to tower range though. No sentries at the ready, but... Oh, oh, ow, oh, oh, Fly. Uh, fly, Fly, yep, Fly, R, the kick from crit, create space, frostbite. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Meanwhile, Miracle takes bottom tier one tower. Oh. Um, <laughs> Town by sentries. That's pretty gimmicky. Yeah. Oh, they're gonna go again. It's on Moon. Rames going into ulti form. He thinks he's got this revenge kill. Moon's been asking for it, but the kick will come in. Then a follow up. Oh, that silence. Miracle's only trying to do enough to spin, however, on the King R. That will do the job. He finds one. The walls with the double iron shells are back, however. So Miracle's gonna go down. Healing Ward's not doing enough. As yeah. Moon's also on the run, the Wolves will not follow any further, but Team Empire, easy trade-off for them. As you mentioned. Uh, however, they're going to lose Scandal. Frostbite's available here from Fly. He's trying to wait enough time for now Moon to blink fall with the Flame Break. It cancels the Requiem of the Soul, now it's going to fly out. But Scandal, well, he'll still end up dying. As you mentioned, it probably would have been nice for Batman to have Lasso at that point to keep the Lycan in place so they could burst him down. But now he has a not too big of a deal. Still has not died post blink, and Moon is off to a fantastic game. Consolid. Hotel's getting a little bit of space inside the jungle too. Looks like he's uh, going to push towards that armlet build over on the DK. So they got the blink, they got the armlet, Miracle with Blade, so. Is, is Manta the way to go, or do you actually go for like SMY kind of style for Jugger? Not I real. see an early defusal as well, which is pretty good for Starkseer, and I don't know. I kind of like early defusal this time, but Yash is just a lot safer because it helps you farm a lot more than defusal does. Mm -hmm. Watch his progression. I think Yash is, Yash is better. Well, you, you almost got me I, I get, as a believer of defusal at the moment. <laughs> Stop those surging heroes away. Burn off the mana. SF doesn't really have that much of a pull. Take off Ion Shell, take off Hex. No. It's all pretty good. Nice build up in the Manta. You could just get Yasha into Manta Diffusal if you want. But we'll, we'll see. It doesn't give you any HP, which kind of is an issue. It's actually pushing notes off the top lane. They're really trying to get in this armor before they're forced to fight. The Moon. Okay, yeah, I hear that. They're worried that Empire is going to have a crack at Rosham. They're right that Empire is all around him. In fact, that Observer Ward, which is down. Okay, they're going to deep ward the deep ward. Uh, but the Observer Ward, which is still up next to that Dire Seeker shop, is watching all of Empire's movements. Yeah, see, that's the one that you don't expect to have. And I still don't really know how OG got four of them down within 20 seconds. Like, that was crazy. Well, it was when Empire rotated all the heroes into mid, and then they all just basically scrambled back to base to regenerate. They pushed the heroes up and got the wards down. Okay, here they go. Throw shot time, Empire walk in, and uh, okay, <laughs> miracle. Do you believe you can kill off Maposhka here? Being isolated Maposhka, which he should be able to, but he can't because they go around the tree line. That's not going to work for Ramsey. Oh, he got cliffed! The flame break from Moon pushed him up. Moon will lose his life for this. And Ramsey's kind of has to use his TP scroll already to get back down again. And Empire. Getting kicked inside of the pit, they just lost their vision because they de water before. No tower doesn't really give a crap, he's currently taking out the tier 2 tower on the top lane after they've already taken out that tier 1 tower. And, uh, okay. <laughs> I think the wolves just killed off fly again. <laughs> I wasn't watching for that one. Crit comes in a little bit too close, King R. Ah, he's gonna miss the stun. He's got a lot of movement speed behind him, Crit actually missing the pullback as well. And with Finger of Death available, they could potentially find that kill, but they just let Roshan go. Maposhka now Omni Slash. He can't get the kill. Uh, he can't get the bounce off the Wild Wing. That's what he was hoping to have happen. But now the rest of Empire, they're trying to bail outside the pit. They're going to get caught. Crit jumps himself forward, combining up there with Moon. I'll turn on the Magnetize as well. As uh, that's a lot of movement speed from a lion being surged away. It's now going to wear off. Scandal winding up the ultimate. They go inside the spin. Scandal's going to go down. There goes your Aegis to the Immortal. That's right now OG playing scrappy fighting, but it's working in a perfect skirmish formation. They isolate Scandal. Five heroes around him, in fact. He'll go down. And Afterlife is on the run. Moon with no Firefly, just his blink. He's not going to catch him. But he looks towards Ramsey's without dog form on bottom. Nah, he's just going to keep him away. That's all. Ah, the life of an SF. You have Aegis, still get focused, still die twice. <laughs> Didn't even trigger Requiem during the fight. I think I actually cancelled it at one point. He did. Miracle had spawn and then No Tails, like, not even close to being in kill range. It would have stopped it. It would have reduced her damage a lot, though. <laughs> and Fly. <laughs> he just walked up Boulder's Brass in between, like, two heroes of Empire, put down an observable behind the tier 2 tower in the mid. 
just does not care. <laughs> I tell you, when Dota games, you get good vision. My vision is so deep, and it may. Well, yeah, the smoke over on the lion as well as the enchantress. If they, yeah, are Radiant's they going to? Yeah, they need to. Their their supports always just constantly fall like super far behind. This is even with Roche Gold and XP, which uh, you know they they committed a lot to. Attack. But overall, they are just not quite in the position to make any commanding moves in this game, and that. Smoke Gank will be dodged. Every member of OG in that lane just bounces. Yeah, they didn't actually see the exact smoke, uh, but everyone was grouping up. It was very obvious play. So, Team Empire. They had the same kind of problem in game number one of this series, where they just were not able to make the scopes, uh, the, the, the smokes really work. Like, if you had like a stat, like how many times did you find a kill after you smoked? They're too obvious. Yeah. They, they don't do them early enough. That's, this is why I really wanted the Enchantress to have a smoke early. Like, you need to be always scared of the Enchantress. And DK was kind of scared of the Enchantress. Bottom lane certainly was not, and top lane was certainly not. So you only have one hero scared of this, like, super huge early game juggernaut. And that, that she just well, did not quite live up to that expectation. Looks like OG's gonna go for a trade off. Oh. It was actually OG who scanned uh, on top of their own secret shop to try and find a, like, if Empire had rotated heroes around there. But Empire makes it very obvious what they're doing. They bring basically their entire line up to that top lane. So No Tell and Fly take care of it. Miracle and Crit will take care of the bottom lane. And this will probably end up being just two tier twos for a tier one and a tier two tower trade. Even if OG did not get this middle tower, I would still say that OG gets a better end of this. Not all T twos are created equal, and this is especially important for heroes that need to farm the ancient, or more importantly, do that Roche, both of which Lycan they, kind of needs. They're just gonna go. Yes, they're just gonna go. You still only got level one Necro book. There's no jump over on the lion. Uh, Moon, however, that was a very quick hex, the follow-up stun, the finger of death too far away for crit. Man, those kicks are right on point. Silencing up all of Empire, but they will burn up the mech. Gives a lot of life back again. And now the jump, Moon, he gets his target. He drags back Maposhka, and damn, they do a lot of damage. And the rest of Empire will bail out of here. Idea seemed good, and then all of a sudden, Earth Spirit. Oh yeah, when Crit gets three or four-man sun into a four-man silence, <laughs> there's... You, you can't do anything about it. You just had to get out of there. Ditch Maposhka. Just accept your losses. How are we looking overall? Okay, so it's about 3.5k in the net worth advantage uh, for both experience as well as gold. It's much different than that though. I, like, there's a lot of things that are just not going well for Empire. They don't have any jump. No one can actually just kill kill anyone. Whereas you have Juggernaut who can solo kill people. You have Batrider who can solo kill people. Earth Spirit can solo kill their support at this point. But Empire, like Enchantress, has she really done any damage this game? Lion, he's still very far away from his Blink Dagger. SF, just pure building. Miracle for the kill. Omni Flash on the afterlife, but he's, he's just scratching his head, wondering how this is even possible. He's at the moment as King Ha ah, slaughtered with a double damage of Miracle. Moon, he doesn't actually have his ultimate available, but it doesn't matter. Miracle burns through him, and in fact, actually, the real burning is done by Moon. But look at the three sentries. <laughs> you've, you've got one, two, three. Looking for it, you gotta feel safe, but one Observer Ward, which was barely out of range of the other two sentries, sees the positioning and allows for the kill. And now you may even find another one. Ramsey's is uh, silenced up. Actually, there's no jump from no tail, so yeah, Ramsey's is his away. But the Vision game has been winning OG this, this uh, Empire lineup. Cannot venture outside of their base. Not even for leisurely strolls. Can't take a good look at this nice new scenery. You take you take a team, which gets listed as I I think like Empire are more of the classic CIS team than anybody else, and then you take away their ability to have advantage in team fights. Like you run the vision game with a coddling game number one. You always make sure the Night Stalker and the Beastmaster and the Band pulls against Empire. And, and then Empire come up with this like hybrid push kind of style. And their best player gets solo killed twice in lane. Yeah, yeah, that that was like I, I still would have. I kind of want to go back into the replay and see how Ramsey's died the first time around. Likely just being greedy mm. and not being level six. I didn't see it, but from the kill that we saw after, you could kind of saw the position that he was in. Yeah, a lot. That was with the lion helping him. He still died. Thanks for a hard life. It does.
Empire can kind of hope to control this ancient area. They do have a observer war set up, but no T2s. That is a big issue. So they, like, every time people have to farm out there, they need multiple heroes to sit there because they can't react quickly enough if they TP their T3s. And, I mean, five men on that side of the map, why not? Scandal kind of looking to push out this mid lane, but still, the wards from OG so deep. Let's see where they set up the next round. Fly already one observer at the ready. I don't and gem up on that right. I don't believe him want to fight just now. Like, don't tell this burn his dragon form so we can take this quad stack. An empire actually, like, okay, they got an invis rune over on King Art, and they're gonna force the bottom tier too. Yeah, you gotta like it level three necro book. Like, you wanna be able to push and do what they attempted to do before, but not Radiance get critted. That's the whole thing. Or Bat Rider ult. Bat Rider ult will also just destroy them. If they don't get an immediate axe on him, the dude's just gonna die. This may actually be a really good time to do it. Like, with Dragon Dragonfall running out, they do have a one minute window. The only problem is, Miracle pushing in through that top lane is causing real issues. Because now they're gonna- it's a straight tier 2 for tier 2 tower trade at this point. And OG, like, they know no one's defending. They got an Observer Ward inside the base. Oh, Miracle fire. doesn't have a TP, yeah. Okay. Wait, what, he doesn't? No, nope, he doesn't. Okay, then they go. They most definitely go. This is a tier 3 tower time. You can breathe fire all you want. The mech triggered very early on, trying to keep the street wave alive. And there's your last two, hooking up and dragging back Scandal. He's gonna go almost instantly in a requiem of souls. They bring down one, the buyback coming up there from the DK. Fly lets it go. That'll get a revenge kill onto Scandal. Miracle spinning back the rest of the wave here of Team Empire. Maybe coming a little bit too far forward. So is No Tell. That's done from King R. Lines up for two, but they don't have the damage output anymore. Ramsey's is too low. The flame break barely out of range of Ramsey's. And now the rest of Empire, they will actually just TP out. They do significant damage to tier 3 tower, get a buyback on the DK, but that's where it ends. Juggernaut's getting really large now. He didn't have a TP because he really wanted his battle theory, so he bought the component from base, then he went to the side shop, finished it off, bought a TP scroll, and then um, brought it to himself. But he started TPing pretty much when Moon started his lasso, and it was just a couple of seconds too late, and unfortunately they did have to use a buyback on No-Tail, but No-Tail has tons of gold. He's rich. That he is. That he is. But delaying up the... Uh... Laying up the Assault Curas when you know Empire is just going to come back and do it again. Because it kind of feels like Empire are uh, playing on a clock, even if it's set by themselves. Like if they can get the next Roshan, which spawns up in now a minute and a half, and they're going to be looking a lot better. They've got a fresh armlet over on Ramses, so this Lycan could be a little bit stronger. The BKB is still short here for Scandal, but it's not the greatest thing for him. Gotta worry about this cleaving Juggernaut though. Yeah, Dragonite doesn't have his AC completed, but Miracle, he went for the farming Yasha first into the Battle Fury, which is going to be awesome at dealing with the Lycan Wolf and the summons. Uh, they're using Miracle as bait! It's just so obvious! <laughs> the Lycan Wolf's now going to have a bit of a walk around. That's why the Obs and Sentry is down uh, from OG. So they see the walls having a bit of a run. They get looking towards the pit instead. But Empire actually have real. Like, again, this. Uh, sorry, OG. Observer and Sentry on the on the secret shop ramp. Then another one over on the cliff side, and one on their high ground in base. Yeah, that one's been there for a while now. Oh, wolves have expired. OG trying to stay around until Roche spawns, but they're going to be forced back by this impending Empire siege on the left lane. Yeah, and they're coming back in force too. Crit staff and a kick, at least keeping the creep wave. And in fact, just crit and fly take care of that creep wave. This is time for Empire to go for the Roche. Well, okay, yeah, with the three TPs straight yeah, back, yeah, yeah. They're, this, they're coming. They definitely should go for Roche. And it's almost going to be perfect timing for Empire to take it out. It's going to respawn maybe as soon as they get there. However, Miracle looking for a solo pick. He might get an afterlife. Uh, maybe, but SF Scandal is right around the corner. And now Ramsey going to finally. Did he see. I think he saw Miracle go into the trees. Or d no, he didn't. They get a D ward, which is nice. I actually get three. With just that one sentry, two sentries and knobs. But they don't know the Juggernaut's there. Miracle is just playing the waiting game. He knows they're around. In comes Moon. Fireflyed up. The Invis is there. Blink Lasso. Catch down the line. Miracle moves forward. Oh my, he is not. And again! Trick with the kick into a three man zone and the magnetized. Let it all go all over Empire's face right now. The Requiem is also trying to get a lot of this. And maybe, maybe now with Lycan, he can actually do some work. Team Empire, this is the best they've looked so far. But they've still got a double kill on Chris, which they have to worry about.
Darkseer is not a healthy man. He went back and Roshan will not be going the Radiant's way here of Team Empire. The upside is the Saddle was pushing in the top lanes. The tier 3 tower's taking damage. So Empire get something back and will force a reaction from Moon to defend that top lane. So it looks like OG also will not be getting Roshan. Yeah, Miracle just does crazy stuff like that sometimes, and he was just there to assassinate the lion without blowing any significant cooldowns. And who needs a Darks here? What do you have an Earth Spirit? He hit three heroes that were just right next to each other, just perfectly set up for a huge Omni Slash from Juggernaut. It's, it's the clustering. You go into such a tight choke point. I, I don't know exactly what that is being drawn down by Notel, but it's a whole bunch of like scribbles on, on basically this line right here. <laughs> Just around the secret shop. I don't know what he's trying to communicate with that one apart from, hey, this was an okay fight until this point. Damn, yeah, Miracle's getting bigger and bigger. I'm surprised DK has a level BKB. I talked earlier about how his armor wasn't terribly useful because of Impetus, Lion Finger, Darkseer Ion Shell, you know, these sort of things. And mm -hmm. if you're not scared, if, if your armor isn't going to be very useful, you need. You know, King of us dead. Yeah, he's, he's burning. Okay, oh. now he's actually out. Uh, no, he's not. <laughs> Flame break, tick damage at his best. Now OG certainly head around the pit. They know Lion is deep in the grave for 40 with buyback off or buyback on cooldown. And this should be Roche for. I don't know who this is going to be for. Miracle almost has Scotty and. He has a lot of HP. I don't think he's gonna die. Maybe a No-Tail, because No-Tail's been taking a spell, but he's not that great with the Aegis because of the way his ultimate works. Mm-hmm. You almost <laughs> kinda wanna give it to the most valuable player right now. Give it to give it to the yeah. spirit. He's <laughs> 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 be doing the most. Who are you expecting me to say when I say most valuable player? <laughs> Juggernaut. <laughs> he really is. He's doing so much work. And his net worth is yeah. Also deems him the most valuable player. 16k. It's a 7k overall advantage for OG, but the experience tells a bigger story. 15k in favor of OG. You just don't have anything else on, on Empire. Like, maybe once they get that blink dagger on a lion, but he's still, like, a, a K short of it. BKB on Ramdi's will make his fight This smoke is nicer. super obvious. Oh, they're gonna scan too. Yeah, there it is. It just flagged it. Multiple things coming out from Moon. They run inside the pit. Now, there's no vision inside the pit here from OG. That's why yeah. you have a Batrider. Oh, Moon's that's way too late. Yeah, Roshan's already done. Empire's got it. They're gonna get out. OG is, however, smoked up and they should jump. They find Scandal. They need something to counter shit before Scandal goes down, but the damage from Miracle is just so big. Having a double damage rune, but they only burn through the Aegis. Behold, no Tail takes a simple damage, killing off that Necro. Looking down, Scandal lines up the ulti. Fly, letting the ulti go as well. They've already lost two of their big cores and Empire. They're happy to just keep running this one off. You've got two huge cores down. Now they just want to pick up a couple of consolation prizes. The main one being that Earth Spirit. He's done so much. The Yule Scepter, TP, is there a disable this? Yup, they do not have one. But you brought down two big cores. Only one of them has buyback. You burnt the Aegis Immortal Shore, but they're coming into bottom lane. Wow, I cannot believe they did not go into the pit. Maybe they, I think OG actually expected Empire to go up the hill, but they don't have any jump. So if they smoke up their hill, they're just going to get wiped because they only have Dyer's one BKB, which ended up actually catching OG really off guard, because you don't want to lasso the BKB target with an Aegis, because <laughs> he just BKB in the work room immediately after, and Juggernaut did not get his ultimate off. Nice Hex finger coming out from Lion. And dubious decision making from OG. I think they were also waiting for the chicken to bring them a smoke so they could get a jump on the Empire. Yeah. This seems like it a little bit late. Now fortifications to come. Eight seconds until Miracle's alive again. And it looks like Empire is very, very uncertain Dyer's about finishing this job. No BKB up on Scandal. Five seconds. Now they should feel a lot more comfortable going up that hill. Necro at the ready. Yep. So let's see how OG fights this one. Maposhka gets initiated on Moon up with the Firefly. Looking for a target with a back from Afterlife. Forced the issue, but again, crits all over Empire like a hot rat. Looking for more as Moon dragging up Ramsey. He's being only flashed up too. Will there be enough? Miracle will finally move down. Okay, Empire. You thought you had the advantage, but you had nothing. They've lost three heroes. They're about to lose four. King Art does not have a chance of surviving through this one. They're all around him, and there's been even from Miracle to ensure it. But it's Fly who kills the cures with the uh, with the Nova, and there's four heroes down. Yes, they've got buybacks 
What do they really achieve? Nice Omni Slash onto the Shadow Fiend, did a lot of damage to him, and nice lasso bringing up Lycan to the land of helplessness. Up on the high ground without a BKB, just burning the death. But you know, just, Mep Mepushka just... was oddly out of position though. He was just in there. This is this is the moment, like, I know we talked about this this morning, and I'm like, I, I always worry about this with Empire, like, you you get yourself an advantage. Yes, they weren't having a big advantage in this game, like, you, you took a good fight against two cores, you could have regained more map control, but they just said, you know, we've got to take the racks. Another DD for, for Miracle. That's kind of the lineup, though. You, when you have a Lycan, you want to be able to push Rex down. You yeah. can't man fight the Juggernaut because he has a Battle Fury to deal with your mass summons, which is the majority of your damage output. So they, they really needed to win that fight on bottom where Miracle TP late to secure them a Rex. And then once you get that Rex, they feel much more comfortable proceeding to the next phase. But now it's that feeling of uneasiness when you have a lineup that should be a racks up and you aren't. It's, it's the question mark, right? Like, you, you really need to win the fight, but do you have enough to win the fight? I think they need to commit for it, though. Otherwise, you're going to see BKB on Dragon Knight, which is going to be a huge problem combined with BKB already out on the moon. They just need one or two picks from the Batrider to make this game much easier for them. What they pretty much need to do is prevent Empire from getting to the Radiant Jungle near the bottom side of the map or like past the river on the top side of the map. That's kind of where Empire should not be. And if they can't be in that area, they can't transition into pushes, even if Empire wins a team fight, which they probably shouldn't just because they're so far behind in terms of gold and mega farm. He doesn't see him. <laughs> the Absorb Lord came down too late, now Empire will actually smoke and move out. The first to break, Moon instantly jumps, they find Scale on the Omni Flash, actually isolating up the SF Moon. Red comes out, SF will finally go down with the finish. Now for Miracle to find the job as Grit tries to escape out. He's actually back into a huge wall! They need more Sun Tower, they need more damage. Renzi just forced back out of this one, Fly flies into a perfect Nova position. And that's going to be Empire. Retreating back inside their base. I thought with that back, maybe there was a glimpse of hope. No damage. Yep. It's the same thing. They have a lot of setup, but no damage. And Shadow Fiend just got annihilated. This bottle swapping onto the Juggernaut into the late game has proved to be a game winner for OG time and time again. Holding that DT until a very key moment. But then you gotta not only for like. I, you, you, make, you make sure you go for the whole fight, but even had up like the force will push in through mid. But they can go for more if they want it, but do they? Your dragon form's wearing off. You, even up. if you think you might win the fight here, it's not worth when you have two gems on you. You do not want to lose those gems. Gem is just an extra security measure going into the late game that the net worth tail doesn't really tell because empires, they can't venture outside of the base if they don't have a gem because they're just. You're gonna have that constant feeling of eyes on you. Mm -hmm. And you need that security that they don't know where you are so you can actually make moves. And now that they have the Lion Blink, which he picked up before dying on that bottom T3 push, they can actually make and fly. He does have a gem. <laughs> King R thinking about jumping him, but everyone's close by. I just love like how like fly, like a crystal mate with 1200 HP, tears down a line as well as an enchantress, and even though he just had his he just used his blink, still decides to attack. Make it seem like he's got the rest of his team behind him. So uh, I still like this Blink Yule build from Earth Spirit. I think it kind of uh, helps a lot with his most recent weakness, which is the very slow speed of the Boulder Smash. With that, you can just time it with the Yules and you can stun someone very reliably instead of it like, uh, it might hit some people. <laughs> you need that reliability mm -hmm. for sure for a hero like Earth Spirit. Mr. Reliable has been crit this game. Yeah. Well, they're, they're waiting for the next opportunity. And is the next opportunity just around Roshan? Or can they force as a five man squad? Or do you even worry about it? Like, Empire's you, gonna come to you, right? All you need to do is make sure they don't have wars up. If Empire doesn't have vision, they will always feel scared, and most of the fights that they're going to take, they'll be at a huge disadvantage because of the position that they're going to be in an Empire, trying to get the jump before OG regroup. One of the most desperate smokes, but mid lane is going to be push up up that hill, and OG will certainly notice what's going on at this point. Yeah, this yeah. is... Right now, they're like, okay, they, we, we definitely know that they're smoked. Yeah, this is basically Captain Obvious right now. 
And, well... However, Fly is not there. <laughs> so this could be something that they might win by virtue of it being a 4 on 5. Maybe. Rune Firefly is up. He's looking for a target. Miracle jumps forward. Okay, they see everything. With Miracle Spin will allow him to get back in range of his own tier 1 tower. This uh, Shadow Blade tower. might catch them off guard, too. Can they even worry about this? Like, your middle lane is still pushing in. Like, Ramsey's had to come back to defend it. Yeah, Empire just have to back out. Might be time for OG to smoke themselves. Oh, that's not exactly what they do. Five man move. Oh, BKB up on Miracle. That's really bad. Now they have no way to stop his damage output. He doesn't need a DD anymore to wreck people in team fights. Alright, here comes OG. Who can they catch off? Maposhka is probably going to be the easiest target, especially when he walks straight into the middle of OG. They don't commit any abilities at all, apart from Firefly from Moon, but that wasn't looking for him. It was looking for another target. But they have a Sentry Ward down. Uh, now Moon's going to see this and get rid of it. Blink away. But they don't have the Firefly initiation. Oh. Here they go with the Healing Ward, Siege. Yeah, bring on the kitty. Yeah, let's hear the Mew. <laughs> Uh, with Dragon Form up as well, Afterlife. He can blink and try and go for the back, but the back in the wall really has to hit Anthony. Knows that walks back into it, making a friend of himself at the moment. They've already managed to bring down the Lion. The battle with the Omni Slash. Scale's getting ripped apart right now. Miracle needs one more attack to finish the job. The last two, however, is holding Rams in position. And Miracle will come down to help with the rest of his team. SF had to retreat, and this looks like a secondary Rax. It also looks like the end of hope for Team Empire. The power of the DK in their lineup too. No tail is like you can't ignore him. He doesn't do that much damage, but the amount of stuff that he puts out, scandal. That ulti does practically nothing. With the spin going off from one, the Yules from the other, No Tail's getting raised, four stars away. Now he can just arm let toggle his way back to victory as scandal. To keep the chase going with the kick, in fact the pullback did its work and there it is, the GT call will finally come out. And I don't know who you want to give an MVP to in this game, but I, 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 I want think to say Moon. Crit. Like, Crit's been so good throughout this entire series. I think Moon uh, for think this Moon? game, because he set up an MVP really hard early, which kind of relieved the Roach on 